Hey, what's up guys? Silky Crisp here. For a lot of you guys that have been asking for some extra information on aim training and some guides, I figured this would be a good way to uh, get a lot of extra information out here. Uh, this is an interview between me and a fellow YouTuber named Joni. He uh, contacted me, wanted to get some extra information on aim training, and he basically covers a lot of the questions that I get asked on a daily basis. Uh, Timestamps will be in the description to each of the topics that we cover, and a link to Joni's channel will be in the description. And uh, thanks for watching, guys. Give me just a breakdown on your aim story. How long did it take you to get from where you were to where you are now? So, um, I guess way, way back when Modern Warfare 2 came out, um, I that was like my first ever shooter. And I played like okay. probably a thousand hours on that game on uh, Xbox. And then I played a couple hundred hours every year after that, like every Call of Duty that came out. So... You know, in total, I've got like probably two to three thousand hours into Call of Duty on console um, before okay. I ever switched over to PC. And then like, you were, you were doing a controller that whole time on console. Yeah. Yep. Just controller. And I was like, I did quick scoping, and I was even starting to do like aim training back then. I would uh, put it against easy level bots with like headshots only, turning off okay. aim, aim assist, uh, like turning my sensitivity Black. all the way up. You know, I, I really wanted like I really wanted to get into like phase or optics. So I was like, you know, really trying for that. Oh, you were, you were going for it, yeah. Yeah, but I wasn't. I wasn't. Um, I wasn't like consistently recording. I didn't. Con I didn't play enough to like get clips and stuff like that. So it was more like just getting the skill up was the main priority for me at the time. So I didn't. I wasn't like making videos and stuff back then. Um, but yeah, like five years ago, over I think it was five years ago, Overwatch came out, and that was like my first uh, PC shooter on mouse and keyboard, and I realized I sucked. <laughs> Dude, Overwatch is so hard. Yeah. I was playing uh, a lot of Silver, Soldier 76 just because he was basically like the Call of Duty guy. Right. Zach. And then... Um, after that, it was just kind of like the way that I've always played games is I get really obsessed for like a month or two and then I'll play a lot, you know, and then I, I get above average, but I never really get to like a high level in any game. Um, not since like Modern Warfare 2, basically. And so Apex came out and I that game really was what started my interest in aim training because I realized that you don't really? get that, into that many gunfights because it's a battle royale. And I was also playing like the ranked there? mode, so it really was not getting to a lot of gunfights. So I started aim training, and that turned into like 100 plus hours of aim training, 200 hours of Apex, and then I, you know, kind of set both of them down because there wasn't any ranked system for Kovacs at the time. So, yeah, that's so for the whole voltage. Yeah, before Voltaic, it was actually Aimer7 just came out with his guide back then. Wow, they so I was trying so to good. become like sub intermediate, I think was his rank. One shot right here. Back then. And then I wasn't until this last January um, where I started making videos consistently. And I started my like Voltaic aim journey where I started aim training two hours every single day and climbed from, I probably started around gold to platinum level to grandmaster I just hit um, like last month. Started pretty high then. I mean, starting up right, gold, platinum. Yep, yep, pretty high. I was probably, you know, pro top ten percent to top five percent around the top five percentile for most scenarios. So I think you know, two thousand hours plus on console, the eye hand coordination from that I think definitely carries over. Yeah, definitely. And as time goes on, you know, I thought I had some pretty decent aim, but just recently, after starting to watch you, I that's when I started doing my full take gosh oh, yeah path, go down here. and whew, my aim is not nearly as good as i thought it was <laughs> i'm like i hit a couple of them into bronze but other than that it's like just barely barely bronze on i got a lot of work. yeah i think a lot of people get humbled as soon as they run those benchmarks they're, but they're honestly they're really competitive oh i can't like yeah a, a diamond somebody that's a diamond complete is like a top one percent aimer you know so, no, so then grandma, it's like, oh, top five. Yeah. It's like, yeah, insane. it's, yeah, I'm basically like top five 100 probably. Um, like if I, if I actually submitted my scores for the rankings within Voltaic, I'm like pretty close to top 50, but yeah, pretty like all the, if you look at, um, pretty much all those benchmarks, I don't I, like, I'm, I'm within like the top 200 on all of them. So yeah, it's, it's pretty competitive.
Okay, it's pretty high up. Some insane dedication. I gotta commend you. Yeah, but I mean, I, I like doing it too, though, you know? Yeah, I, was, I remember I was tuning, when I was tuning into your stream the other day. Nice. Training. I saw people. Let's go. A couple people mentioning that. Oh, yep. Not surprised to see you training. <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. And it, it's funny because I, uh, I, when I first started with Voltaic, I was like, you know what, I'm just going to get to Platinum so that I can join the Discord. And then I hit Platinum and I was like, you know, okay, we should probably get Diamond. And then I got Diamond. I was like, all right, like, that's pretty good. Like, let me just try for Masters, see if I can get it. But then after I hit Masters, I'm totally just going to, like, chill out. And then I hit Master and I was like, oh, okay, well, maybe after Master complete. And then after Grandmaster. So I just keep pushing it back, like, the goalposts keep moving. But that's, yeah. that's what I like about, like, just that rank leaderboard really helps your motivation and i think if they had that back when i first started training back when it was just like aimer seven's guide i would have put like several thousand hours probably into the aim training at this point and have full-blown rsi yeah yeah a yeah. whole whole other level send it god tier i mean already you're already god -tier. real like i was watching that video of you playing pex damn that that actually like it's funny because you'll watch you'll watch you know YouTube clips and stuff and people have like really good aim, but then seeing Grandmaster Voltaic level aim like in practice is really crazy to watch. Like I was kind of shocked. I was kind of shocked. Really? Thanks, man. I... Yeah, man. <laughs> well, thanks. <laughs> thanks. Well, what's funny is like so I'm I'm pretty good. So like any game that I hop into, I'll have really good aim. But like if you compare me to somebody like hollow um or these other pro somebody that has like a thousand to two thousand hours in apex probably has similar or better aim than me so like it there's still it still takes hundreds of hours playing that game to like adapt your brain to the the movement and the recoil and the character models and everything that goes into it so like i'm really good at controlling my mouse but I can tell that even over the last few weeks of playing Apex consistently, my aim just keeps getting better and better because my brain is just like getting more in tune with the game. So there's still people that have that they just don't do aim training that are probably gods if they were to actually try it, you know? Yeah. Yeah. You can definitely see it because I, I mean a lot of it. I made a video about this. Like, aim aim can make all the difference. Yes, most definitely. But. I think game sense overall, you know, general skill within the game overshadowed that. Position yeah. your enemy. Uh, if you not position your enemy far better than the shots. Um, real, real, real quick. What, what is your setting? I just got to get the, the, you know, the question that everybody wants to know. What's your settings? Grip, mouse. How, how, how do you like to do things? So um, I use a GPX Super Light mouse. Um, I used the G, the G Pro Wireless before that. Loved it. Um, most important thing with the mouse is just that you like the grip, I like the shape of it. Honestly, I actually just yep. bought the G703, which is a, a lot heavier mouse, but I like the shape of it probably more. Um, but I'm still gonna stick with the Super Light because I can just be way faster with it. Uh, okay. Mm. The is the 703 is that heavier mouse like? 80 grams or something it's like it's that. actually i think it's over 100 it's pretty heavy Ooh. um but you can actually be a lot smoother with a heavier mouse um just because it's easier to control oh so, i didn't um, know that yeah the lighter mice are a little bit harder to, they're like more you're more in tune with like your hand but they're just a little bit you know you basically let it's... less effort to move it you know gotcha i, I guess that would make sense because it's the same concept as activity right Right, exactly. And, that, and that's why, like, people always ask for your sensitivity, but at the end of the day, like, you just need to pick a sensitivity that works most of the time. So I I change my sensitivity all the time just because I like to change it. It's fun. Because, um, <laughs> yeah. like, basically all you're doing is you're basically, if you have a higher sensitivity, you're going to use more wrist. If you have a lower sensitivity, you use more arm. And I like to use a little bit more wrist than arm, and I like turning around quicker. Oh, I feel man. like it helps your movement to be a little bit faster. So he went all the way over for, there? Ape for Apex, I use, like, 28 That's centimeters for 360. Okay. Um, but I've also gone down to like 40 and you know, the same thing happens with like Kovacs. 
I can use any sensitivity from like 20 to 40 centimeters and I'll get roughly the same score. So it's not, it's not really? necessarily like, uh, maybe because I change it all the time, but like I just did air angelic for, um, yesterday at 15 centimeters and I got the exact same score at 75 centimeters. Yeah. So I, I, the whole I question of like sensitivity is, um, like for me, it's kind of funny because it doesn't really matter. Like your, I your brain will just adapt to it. There on. Yeah. It's, it's funny you say that. Cause I, I used to be one of those people that hardcore believed, oh, you have to stick with one sensitivity and finding all these calculations to make sure it correlates between each and every single game. But, um, once I started getting into the soul voltaic thing and looking into, uh, you and Bardo's and rid i think the game was yep. um the that's when i started really experiment sensitive and i had always experimented with sensitivity I, i'd be lying if Front, i didn't right say that i changed often um but i would try to stick with one change it and stick with that and try to dial it in but then feel like oh maybe i should speed it up or down depending on I felt like track any meds um but now ever since i have been doing uh, what you guys have we're gonna die anyway. Trying out def different abilities, especially <laughs> going in higher sense of key, uh, really smooth out your aim. It makes a huge difference. And I, I feel like 100%. I have no problem going back to whatever sense of key I felt comfortable with. Yeah, like no problems at all. If anything, it feels better. It feels like there's no different. Yeah, exactly. Kind of amazing. Well, your body back to him. Yep, it's just kind of dependent on the game and also like what mouse pad you use if you have a really slow cloth mouse pad you you can get away with a higher sensitivity or if you're using like a you know hard pad then you might want to do a slower sensitivity because it's you know less effort to move your mouse so that's why it's it's all personal preference and like the length of your fingers the, your forearm all that stuff is all yeah it's all personal preference you know tons of varying factors and oh it's a life i'm using right now i'm using a uh a cloth, cloth fanatic dash, I'm like man, I feel like I don't know if it's the mouse pad. I know, I mean, definitely it's part of my aim itself, but uh, I definitely feel like this mouse pad. Like, I need something. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, I feel like the gear search is just never ending. I don't, I don't know why, but. It well, it's it's good to experiment. It really is, because I was using uh, like the Steel series for a long time and didn't realize how like slow that mouse pad was. And then I got the G640 and was like, whoa, this is smooth, man. But then I uh, <laughs> is that what you're using right now? No, I just the the only reason I switched from it was if it if my hand gets a little bit of moisture, like it gets a little too hot, or it's like humid, then the the mouse pad changes a little bit it's weird and like you'll basically yeah. get these stutters with your hand so i'm using the, yeah. the zoe gsr now which is like a medium um mouse pad i guess as okay. far as speed goes okay yeah yeah i've definitely been looking into mouse pads uh, just for that, that zach's mouse pad thing that's it's like like here in colorado you know like hot and cold and on day night like it's like weird weather um yeah so it does feel like the map your your mic is still cutting in and out quite a bit oh it is yeah i'm not i think it's a noise gate thing i have said that like 10 times but I, i'm pretty sure that's what it is but who knows okay yeah, sorry I, I think yeah i think it's that uh let me try turning it down just a little bit more okay how about how about that better yep i think so you like your volume way up which is fine i can turn you down oh, okay so you're good okay Sorry, sorry. Yep. Okay. Um. So, quick question: Since you were uh, back in the day, you know, you were going pretty hard on controller. What is your opinion as far as mouse versus controller? controller the, 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 the great the debate. The, the great badge. debate. Um. Each has their pros and cons. Uh, controller is better close range, and yep. uh, mouse and keyboard is better long range. I also think that. Um, sniping and clicking in general is easier uh, with a mouse and keyboard. Um, but then again, like quick scoping is is heavily uh, uses aim assist pretty heavily also. So at the end of the day, like I've I've gone back and tried to use a controller and 
even though I haven't used it in years, I can still laser people. So I think now nowadays the aim assist is way stronger than it was back in the day. Um, and I would and I would just like not even use aim assist and wouldn't really notice the difference because I had put so much time into like, like I said, I was like aim training before aim training was cool. Oh my god, um, I thought right. much lower than that. But yeah, I, I uh, I've thought about going back, but after how much work I put I into mouse and keyboard, there's no there's just the no turning back. And I I do think it has a higher skill ceiling also. You yeah. can do crazy stuff with it. You can make it literally look like an aimbot. You know, like watch <laughs> Team e, if you watch any Team EXE montage, it looks like an aimbot. You just can't do that on controller. You just can't. Yeah, yeah, it, it's a uh, it's pretty crazy. I mean, I feel like like the closest I've seen as far as looking like aimbot is maybe like face testy. At least from what I've seen, it on, on controller at least. Mm, okay. um, I think I got. But games. yeah, it definitely seems like, especially with now, like for example, in Warzone, they have that setting. I think it's precision, the aim assist setting, and it feels like it just kind of locks on. I'm terrible at controller, but I feel like I am okay at hitting headshots with snipers if I have that setting on. And it's kind of crazy, and to me, it's just kind of crazy. But I, I totally hey, agree with you 100. Yeah. percent I think there's definitely a higher skill sling with mouse and keyboard. Um, yep. I think controller is hard. I I have a really hard time playing controller. Um, but mouse and keyboard is also hard. <laughs> they're they're both hard. I mean, yeah. Yeah. I feel like um, you can be pretty like more consistent with controller as well because of the aim assist. A lot getting on target is slower, but once you're on target, you're probably going to be staying there. You know. Yeah. Yeah, so yeah, it kind of keeps you in that general area that well that you need to be at with compared to mouse and keyboard well, There's so many variations that can happen just depending on your own muscles and your mouse pad There's just so many variations when it comes to mouse and keyboard kind of inconsistent Yep, yep um, So what do you think about? Uh, as far as flicking versus tracking what do you think in, in general is more important to practice? Um, I think you should improve all aspects of your aim. Um, my team over even here. if you play Valorant, you should be working on tracking. You should be working on, you know, really precise smoothness. You should work, be working on really fast flicking. All of it comes into play. Glitch, but um, even if you're just maneuvering around the map. Because um, yeah. you're... While you move your mouse, you're also controlling, you controlling your camera, you know, so if you have a shaky camera it, it hurts your ability to see stuff So and centering and things like that. Yep. Did I lose the yep. Round or did I... Okay. So I mean you probably want to put more focus on Like target switching okay, if you're gonna be a Call of Duty player and you know more static dots if you're a Valorant player You know, it makes there. sense to put more volume on that, but you should put you should train all parts of your aim because at the end of the day like aim training doesn't really um, it just gives you better m raw mouse control and like eye hand coordination, right? So, yeah, I think it's important to do all of it. Yeah, no, definitely. Yeah, I now think, that uh, that we're going to and, and it's like you said, it's I, like I definitely down. feel like it correlates into each other, right? Because even the tracking can play into your flicking as far as like smoothness goes and how consistent you are with the flicks, side, here, right? I mean, yep. that's just kind of how I think about it. But don't even, need it um, so rich. <laughs> even like, Money okay, so right I was now. watching one of your videos and you were talking about. You're talking about how you should uh, do Overwatch for, I guess, I can't remember if it was like oh 30 God, minutes there. Day or just, I think you were just saying play Overwatch. Yeah, just out, if yeah. Aim. If you're just trying to get better aim, yeah. Yeah, and I, so I started that today, I her literally to this morning at like four o'clock in the morning. Straight I'm, so I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna go in there and, and I did some McCree. I did like McCree for 30 minutes and then I did Soldier for 30 minutes. Uh, and then I noticed that, I don't know, maybe it could be that I did McCree before, but I noticed that when I went back to McCree after Soldier, it just felt like I was more consistent as far as like positioning of my crosshairs and lining it up with the head and just getting, you know, smoother flicks. I don't know, it could be in my head, but it's what it seemed like for sure. <laughs> no, yeah, like um, one of the best scenarios that you can do to warm up your aim is uh, Air Angelic 4 because it's just constant, constant micro corrections. And so you could go to any game after that. Like there's, I've talked to a few different people about this, but yeah, like really precise tracking stuff where you're constantly making little changes like that helps you with your flicks, you know, helps you with, with clicking too. So yeah, I totally can see that. 
But the reason I, yeah, the reason I said Overwatch is because the targets are small. They're moving around all over the place. You can choose to click or track, and there's all those custom game modes like Aim Arena. Yeah. Like you can get so much practice in. And <laughs> yeah, dude, yeah. Play, play Widow Headshot. Lobby. If you can win a Widow Headshot lobby, you're a god. Like you're good. <laughs> Black, dude, really. some of the things people do in those widow headshot lobbies are crazy. Like their grappling hook into 360 scope. Like it's like, whoa. dude, there's some people in there. If they were to do aim training, they would crush people. I'm, yeah. I'm sure. I'm sure a lot of them. Well, do you think just a lot of them just spend all day in those widow headshot lobbies without doing Kovacs or anything? Yep. I think a lot of people they do widow headshot and then play the game. That's it. That's crazy. Because you get. I mean, it isn't. A lot of reps. Sorry, go ahead. So you get a lot of reps with that game. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely. Because it's just constant. It's not like, like you were saying. Like I, I feel like the main problem with getting better in Apex is it takes so much time in the battle royale mode to get into gunfights and everything. Um, I guess now it's not as bad because you have the arena mode and everything. But still, right. compared to Overwatch, it's just constant. You can just do it for hours. Yep. Just yep. That's, <laughs> yeah. So like if you I wouldn't really recommend aim training to somebody that's trying to get better to Overwatch, to be honest with you. I wouldn't. I would have them just really? do aim arena and uh Yep, just aim arena and the actual game. Just, so what about in a, so let's say for example, what if you just used Overwatch Overwatch only as an aim trainer for a, for other games? What, what do you think about that? That works too, man. I mean yeah. at the end of the day, like like the simple formula i guess for just getting better at anything really is just like volume times challenge so like more reps m more volume of reps at that are really challenging you're gonna get better quicker Ooh. and so like it's much more challenging to move your character and also hit moving targets that are also other human beings than it is to hit um dots but then again like you can do way more difficult scenarios in aim training then you can't even in overwatch so maybe i maybe i take back my comment there probably is um some benefit to aim training with playing overwatch but i would I use my arc star there at the end of the day like or you have to play them. your game if you want to get better at the game so like it's not like i put in 500 hours of aim training that that's equivalent of 500 hours of overwatch that's like you know right th they're not the same right right especially if you're trying to get better at overwatch yeah especially so, so that's like why i recommended um in one video is just like a 30 minute training or aim training 30 minutes of deathmatch, and then like two or more hours of ranked um how do you um do you split it up do you split up the the routine exactly like that or how do you go about splitting up the um so for the last year like aim training was my main game so i did Two, two plus hours, right? What? So I did the, like the Pretty voltaic right. fundamental yeah. routine takes an hour and then I would also do a, a speed routine, a smoothness routine. Um, I would also just mix in different types of routines. So there's like Kowser's extreme training routine and uh, Bardoz's Valorant routine. So I would just do a lot of different types of routines. Um, okay. As well as playing my weakest benchmark, uh, just grinding it for five to 10 minutes and then a harder version of that benchmark, five to 10 minutes um okay. that's yeah and, and if you talk to like a lot of people that are higher up in like the, the further along you get like you don't see the same um progress so a lot of people let go of routines the, the higher they get because then they can like really focus on nailing down one specific score and stuff like that oh i see i see okay really dialing in on something that either either a score that they're trying to hit or maybe something that they feel like they're lackluster in such as smoothness or whatever yep yep yeah i so i've been doing your um i pretty much went through a couple of your videos and i just kind of notated all the different routines that you recommended and i've been doing the one where it was one hour of the fundamentals and then uh a 10 minutes of whatever your weekend um and then another 10 minutes of the same one but higher or yep. harder harder version yep um and pretty much it's just smoothness for me i feel like i have a really 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 hard time with smoothness like i feel like that's the bane of my existence so uh, i've been doing the uh i've been doing it at one point or basically 20 centimeters uh for for the smoothness and i do that in the morning so i'll do that 
first thing in the morning and then uh at nighttime that's when i'll do like the fundamentals it's just to kind of split it up and not yeah, tire sure. out my arm throughout the day yeah no that's right. that's a good way to go about it yep no, i just gotta I, I dude that was so much fun doing that overwatch <laughs> like i i definitely feel like i could just do that all day um so it's like kind of like okay where do i throw that in? were you playing aim arena or were you playing uh just the normal game no no yeah i was doing aim arena oh just, okay just yeah 300 kills for each character pretty much oh okay yeah the only thing that aim training really helps with is like uh, vertical movement because most games are just kind of side to side even aim arena is, is mostly side to side true true yeah yeah even even for overwatch too if overwatch standards mostly side to side because most of the time people are picking widow ash uh, yeah no one's picking Farah most of the time but i did i did run into a game where they were picking far and flying around so that that helped a little <laughs> yeah that's i yeah you, i try to focus on like the echo or the pharah um i mean a large part of overwatch you are just shooting shields too so it's not necessarily the best aim training so that i mean aim training it will like make your mouse control better quicker than any other like method but if your goal is to get better at overwatch that's what I, I keep going back to like i feel like i, I want to backtrack and justify why yeah, i said like don't play no, no, no. don't aim train but uh just in general like if you want to get better at something you got to do that thing you can't i mean you, aim train is kind of like lifting weights to get better at basketball you know like you want to spend the vast majority of your time playing basketball and a little, little bit of time lifting weights you know yeah, I, I feel like that's kind of what I've been bad at right now because I I also want to try and push for being better at Apex. I, I really like Apex. I want to make it my main game. Um, I am 100% super noob at Apex, though. Like, I barely have any time played into it. Uh, like, I've pretty much just been doing some arenas. I just got my first win, like, the other day when I was streaming. So I'm, I'm very behind when it comes to Apex, and I, I, I really need to focus on just putting more hours into Apex. I know that's what I need to do, but, you know, it's, it's just kind of hard sometimes. There's so much stuff going on. Yep, um, yep. Well, uh, so, so you've been playing Apex from the start, right? Except you took that break. Yeah, I put, um, like, roughly 200 hours in um, back in, like, Season 2 when and 3 when the ranked mode first came out. Um, but I, like, I avoided fights... I apply, I tried to play safe to climb ranked, so I didn't get into a lot of gunfights. So I wasn't like I was still decent because I have you know I've got a lot of experience with um, with Call of Duty and it's a very similar game as far as like the, the mechanics go. Um, but yeah, not until three weeks ago I hadn't really played at all. Yep. Oh, okay. Well, you're already diamond in arena, right? Yep. yep. In arena? Pretty yeah. close to diamond two. Um, but not quite there. Yep. Okay. okay. Yeah, I'm I'm not even ranked yet, so it's better than me. <laughs> I'll get there eventually. Eventually. Have yep. you played uh, any Warzone? Yep. Yep. I've got like I don't know, hundred hours or something in Warzone. That's what my friends play quite a bit. Oh, okay. What do you think about uh, Warzone versus Apex? Um, I like both games. Um, I think Apex is a harder game for just pure mechanical skill that's why i like it a little bit more um and it's a game that my aim can really shine um whereas warzone it's mostly about positioning and then you know hitting your shots but you know usually the the shots aren't that difficult to hit um yeah so it's definitely more about playing safe and and maneuvering the map um and then Apex, the only re a big reason that I didn't like Apex was it felt like it took so long to kill someone that it was impossible to, um, like in in Warzone or Call of Duty, I can be like a one man army and I can I can kill an entire team, but in Apex yeah. it didn't feel like that. But now that I've gotten to like Grandmaster level aim, now it actually does feel like I can one man army people because yeah. I just can one v one three different people. And as long as I isolate the 1v1, I'm able to like reposition and heal before the next one. Like I can actually do that. So I think, um, yeah, Apex is just a harder mechanical skill game Yeah. for both movement and aiming. So that's why I like it. But at the same time, it, it is a little bit more team focused. Yeah. Um, yeah. But yeah. 
and then also Warzone, it just sucks. Somebody could just camp in a building, and, yeah. <laughs> and you're dead, and you can't do anything. Yeah, yeah, so many times, and it sucks when you're like, you're on, you're, you're on the, you're on the roll, you're going, you're, you got everything good, and you're pushing this building, and then just some good dude just camping in the corner, and the whole game gets the kill on you. It's, it's it can be frustrating for sure. I yeah. feel like that's what's cool about Apex is, uh, it's you can outplay that very easily uh because totally. the way the way the game works you know you don't get insta fried <laughs> like, like and i wish they would i i hate how quick the time to kill is more than uh that that is one of the things i love about apex is how long it does take to kill because it's, it's kind of like you have to be a little bit more methodical on how you approach fights it feels like uh, at least it's so definitely it like me yep. um yeah, I, I, when I first tried Apex, like, I was super nervous to even just go into the Battle Royale mode, so I was like, okay, I'm just gonna do no fill, so I don't feel like I'm bonding without my teammates or anything, you know? And I went in there, and I, I, I got very lucky. I just got put up against probably two very new people, I guess, SBMM or whatever, because, you know, I was obviously new as well. And I had almost got the 2v1, and I felt, like, way, way more confident um, because of that. And... I immediately just fell in love with the gameplay because of like, like you said, it, I could already tell that it's way more reliant on your mechanics and fundamentals. And I just, I love that, man. I love that. So it's so exciting to me. Yeah, It's just a cool game in general too. Just like the, yeah. the look of the game, the abilities and how they all fit together. I just, it's a really cool game. It's awesome. Did you play Titanfall? Uh, no, I, I picked it up for like two hours. Cause I wanted to get better Apex, and then I realized it was a completely different game, really. <laughs> but, uh, okay, gotcha. But yeah, I, yeah. I never played Titanfall, um, yeah, but it, it, I like the whole lore, how they interlace and everything. So I kind of watched some videos, but I've never played it. I've heard a lot of people love it, though. Yeah, there's some hardcore dudes that love that game. Yeah, it's like crazy the whole hacking story going on with it, and <laughs> it's like, whoa, dude. Yeah. yeah. So when when did you start aim training stuff? So for me, I I was kind of doing what you were doing when I first started playing uh, Modern Warfare 2019, pretty much when it came out. Uh, I was terrible at the game, but I really wanted to get better because, you know, I watched some quick scoping videos and, I, you know, same same kind of deal. So I would go into, um, I would just make bot lobbies and same thing, headshot only, car 98 only, just do that for as long as I could, essentially. Oh, okay. Um, that's kind of what started that, but uh, and then I kind of stopped. I did some aim labs, but I never went super hard into the actual aim trainers. Um, there was a period where it was like maybe like a month where I was doing aim labs only. Uh, well, aim labs with the you know Modern Warfare bot lobbies and everything. Uh, but only recently, since I discovered you, essentially, um, I didn't even know what the voltaic system was until. Some people came into my chat when I did the 24 hour stream. Oh, okay. Our aim lab thing, which was about a month ago, was when that stream actually happened. Oh, okay. Yeah, so that was when I first discovered it. And people showed me uh, um, Bardos. They showed me. They showed me Bardos, and then from there, I kind of started looking into Then I found Rid. And then that's how I found you. And. Gotcha. Pretty much once I saw your routines, that's when I when I got into it. So about I just finished the for my first benchmarks on this past Wednesday. And tomorrow I'm gonna be doing my next set of benchmarks. So okay. Cool, cool, cool. Not, not even not even long. <laughs> gotcha. Yeah. No, you can make a lot of progress in a month or two. Uh it starts slowing down later, but yeah, you can you can get pretty good pretty quick if you stay consistent. Yeah, I've definitely felt a pretty big improvement as far as consistency goes. Because I think my biggest issue that I've always had was just tracking. I, I'm really bad at tracking. Very, very shaky. Um, but in this, even just this past week, it's tremendously. It's, it's crazy how much it actually makes a difference. I didn't think it would happen so quickly, but. Dope, man. I wanted to. I'll uh, make sure to watch out for that slowdown. I'm, I'm nervous for that part because it's like, you know, keeping yourself motivated for when you do hit a wall. What do you what do you do when you hit a wall? Or what did you do when you were hitting walls in the time that you were doing your 
journey to Grandmaster. Um, so the I think the first thing you got to realize is that wall, walls are a part of the process, and uh, you're not going to make progress linearly. It's going to be basically a plateau followed by a jump, plateau followed by a jump, plateau followed by a jump. So whenever I'm on a plateau, I know that I'm there, and I'm like, okay, that's fine. That's just part of it. Um, if I feel like I'm on the plateau for a long time, then I'm going to ask myself questions like, am I doing something wrong? Should I be focusing on something else? Should I try a different sensitivity? Should I sit closer to my monitor? So there's experimentation, problem solving that needs to go into that, that you need to kind of do first, or once you realize, like, I'm kind of stuck. You got to, you know, ask yourself, is there something that's like hard pulling me back? If you realize that like, no, there's nothing really pulling me back. I just need to put more time in. Then I will do harder. Just the, the biggest piece of advice I can give anybody trying to get better is do harder shit and force yourself to do the hardest shit you can possibly like stand basically. Um, there's, I mean, there's, a, there's a certain point where like a good analogy is like with, uh, basketball, like if you want to get better at shooting, you don't want to just chuck up full court shots because that's not really going to get you better. There's a sweet spot where you, you want to be doing like three pointers. You want to do basically half court all the way to under the basket. So you want to, you want to put variety and challenge, um, and just put a lot of time in, trust the process and experiment and analyze like what you're doing and yeah. you just got to kind of trust that like if you set this goal your brain is going to figure out how to get you there just through positive and negative feedback as you as you keep going yeah that feedback loop definitely makes sense. yeah even um i've already hit kind of a wall like i don't even know if it's like a wall but there's a you know it'll be like okay i i each day I've so far, I've pretty much have hit a new high score on every single one of these scenarios that I've been doing, but then I'll hit, go on to one that I have a really hard time with and just not, I'm not passing a high score. And then the next day, same deal. Um, and then the next day, all of a sudden out of nowhere, I like, like just, just wait, crush, crush that one benchmark for some reason, just, it seems so random. Um, would you say that that kind of plays into, um, like how how much time and focus do you think you should put into focusing on that one thing if you do feel like you're stuck? Like, do you feel like maybe you should seek out help for that kind of thing? Or I guess it kind of just depends on the person, right? Yeah, I think um, more information is usually better. Um, I've gotten, I have only had a few VOD reviews done for me, so I've never felt that I like needed other people to, to look at it. Um, Let's see one that I was stuck on for now for me to, to be stuck in aim training means that you're not getting a new high score every like let's call it like th three weeks within three weeks of you playing a scenario every day like if you're not getting a new high score you're stuck like you're not doing something right um, if you're let's say you're putting a solid 10 minutes a day like five to ten minutes a day on a specific like benchmark every day for three weeks and you don't get better, then you need to, like I said, you need to like problem solve first. Like maybe, am I, I don't know, like is my monitor actually set to 144 Hertz instead of 60, <laughs> yeah. you know? Like that's actually a pretty like common thing. Did I accidentally turn on mouse acceleration? Um, yeah. Then at that point, yeah, it's, it's fine to seek help. Um, but then again, people make progress at different rates and the people that you see that are like grandmasters and, and stuff who only have 500 hours or so, almost all of them have thousands of hours of FPS experience before that. So don't, you know, everybody goes at their own pace. So I, I don't, I don't know why certain people, you know, progress faster than others necessarily, but that's the number one factor. Um, but yeah, getting, getting VOD reviews is definitely helpful. You don't need to overdo it. Like at the end of the day, like you want to spend the vast majority of your time actually tra aim training and not thinking about how to aim train because okay. at the end of the day you just got to put the time in yeah yeah at the end of the day it's just kind of hours and speaking of overdoing it um what do you think about as far as um 
as far as physical stress goes uh, when it comes to aim training because i've personally had have had some issues in regards to like tennis elbow in the past and things like that so do you have like a routine that you do while you're practicing and while you're gaming in general do you have like a stretch routine that you do do you like massage your muscles or your arm or anything like that um if uh b before i aim I, I don't have like a specific routine no if something hurts i just stop um kind of <laughs> i okay. it, it's it's good it's a good practice after every scenario to take like a solid 10 seconds um to not to not hit the next button I, yeah. I don't always I don't always obey that and sometimes I just get into the mode where like let's just go let's go let's yep. go. Yep. Um if something hurts stop. And again like if you're if the if your goal is to get better at a game and you're hurting yourself with aim training, uh, just stop aim training and just play the game, you know. Yeah. Uh but yeah, I for me a, a big part of it is getting my hands warm so I actually have like a 50 pound kettlebell so sometimes if I feel like my hand has been hurting the last few days or something I'll pick up the kettlebell and hold it for like 30 seconds to make sure my hands warm before I start and then I just in general after every like scenario will like stretch my hand out just like opening and closing my hand and kind of rolling my wrists um, okay. uh, but yeah I've definitely like questioned whether or not I'm gonna get carpal tunnel so <laughs> and honestly like it, aim training is one of the worst things that you can probably do for your wrists yeah. so yeah uh be yeah, careful you could definitely be rough on the body and i i learned that the hard way by doing 24-hour aim labs that's stupid yeah. um <laughs> yeah no i recently i've been looking uh just looking up a lot of stretches and you know things for game directed for gamers and i've noticed that it's helped a lot i've been trying to do um, you know, just general arm stretches, because really my, my issue is my arm. It's not so much my wrist I don't have problems with at the moment. Um, so I'll do stretches pretty much almost between each scenario. You know, sometimes I'll get, like you said, get, you just get into the zone. You just want to yeah. You just want to go. Um, yeah, I definitely think stretching has helped me massively. And, and, I, and I think it's something that people don't think about a lot, too, you know, because... Well, you're, you know, a lot of people that are gaming and aim training are younger, you know, so a lot of times they don't think about that kind of stuff, but, and they might not be affected by it as much in the moment, but later on, you know, definitely yeah. could come into play. Definitely. Yeah, if I have a lot going on, like, because I'm a, I work on the computer all the time for work and sometimes I, I I would actually my hands would hurt from work not from aim training and I would just be like no I can't aim train can't do it okay. but the number one rule is if if it hurts stop and it could be stop momentarily for like five minutes if it's not that bad or it could be like let's stop for a few days or a few weeks so that's my general advice I think no I think that's amazing advice because I am like super guilty of not stopping <laughs> yeah. me too I definitely need to be better about that yeah it's hard when you get in the zone, man, you know? That it's dopamine. So yep. Yep. That <laughs> yep. Dopamine hit, baby. There, yeah, there's some they're talking about like Osu pros that like they get they give themselves carpal tunnel and they just keep pushing cuz they're like, "No, I got to be the best in the world." <laughs> it's crazy. <laughs> Have you ever played Osu? Have you ever tried using that as aim training? Uh, I have. I've I've played it like a little bit and it just, it just wasn't for me probably. Yeah, I, I downloaded it and then I started one and then I balled it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that shit's hard. <laughs> it's pretty. It's pretty hard. It's it's more like a timing game than a, like it yeah. does change your aim a little bit. But for me, like the most important thing is like being able to track a tiny little dot as precisely as you can. Like that's just raw mouse control, and if you can do that, like everything else kind of falls behind that. But yeah, no, I totally agree with you. Um, what do you think in speaking of timing uh how do you feel time training timing comes into play because i do feel like sometimes oh i was really having an issue with timing clicks like it felt like i was pretty much you know dragging my crosshair in a very straight line uh, directly across their head but it was just missed timing clicks and then you know when i actually went back and watched the videos and slowed it down that's this is exactly what was happening and I figured out it was actually my mouse because I had um, debounce that was 
weird setting on this particular mouse of Cool hmm. Master. The D mouse is really wonky. But as soon as I switched mice, like my accuracy went up uh, quite significantly. So what do you think about as far as timing goes? What's a good way to train that in aim trainers rather than Osu? <laughs> Um, I guess I, I haven't really trained it that much. Uh, maybe the years of quick scoping, that's a big timing thing where you're constantly drag scoping. Um, I didn't really train it. I guess static dots is a good way to do it. I do sometimes, you know, misclick, but yeah, I think if you're, if your equipment's working right, it should, it, it will not, you'll naturally just train it through, you know, training clicking. You know, yeah. I, I don't. I know that some people. They, there's certain scenarios that you can do that, that train that timing, and if if that, if you feel like that's what's holding you back, then sure, go for it. Definitely. Yeah, definitely. I I feel like even when I was like even when I was doing the uh, Overwatch this morning and I was playing McCree, at first I was just kind of like I was just like kind of going for it, you know, just trying to hit. And I was just missing a lot. Then I was like, okay, maybe maybe I should really just take my time with each shot even if i just get instantly clapped it's really just focus on uh, accuracy rather than just kind of unloading shots and it seemed to help a lot too because it was like i was kind of focusing more on timing because like you said the characters in overwatch yeah they're just moving around like crazy they're really small really hard to like heads um and yeah, yeah and i feel like yeah it just it is definitely something that kind of just comes with time but i also feel like yeah y if you focus on it it'll definitely help that's like i said that's just kind of an issue that i was having gotcha um, yep um sorry what are you gonna say nope nothing just oh. <laughs> was saying i i agree i i agree i think it's a good idea to focus on accuracy and that will naturally increase like make your timing better yeah yeah, definitely. Yeah, uh, there was a video that Bardos did. Is it Bardos or Bardos? Bardos. Uh, is Bardos? I don't know. He's Italian. He, <laughs> gotcha. he eats pasta. I don't know. Ah, uh, gotcha. Lasagna. <laughs> Lasagna is Bardos. I miss. I misspelled his name in my meme. I put, or I was supposed to capitalize both the O and the Z, and I couldn't fix it until later. So it's it's all right. I was like, oh, too late, shit. Yep. <laughs> Bardos. <laughs> got you, got you. I, I, I watched one of his videos. It was that day when I was doing the 24-hour aim lab thing, and um, one of my subscribers had showed me the video, and he was talking about, uh, he was talking about how he grinded to the top score of, uh, I can't remember which one. It's like the small static. Um, the small static balls, six wall. Yeah, six targets so. small. Yeah, one wall, yep. six targets small. Yep. Yeah, and he was just talking about it. He just took it super, super, super slow. Super slow. And his then, his version of super slow is faster than, <laughs> like, any <laughs> normal human being. Yeah, well, he's on another level by this point. I mean, shit. Yeah. Even for you, too, right? You're on a whole other level, too, man. Well, I mean, my score on one wall six heart is uh, statics by far my worst. Um, but yeah, I'm I'm still like you know in the top one percent, but it's not top one hundred to two hundred like the other ones. You, is that something that you're kind of consistently working on right now? Um, I would like to get my static scores to um, Nova, honestly, because um, I feel like like static dots and target switching are very closely related. Yeah. Um, and it's definitely the weakest part of like what I'm best at is really precise tracking and smoothness So I've got like a couple number one scores and like smooth spheres and control sphere stuff and like top 20 scores in that um, But like static dots. I'm always it's always the, the last to level up on my benchmarks and stuff Okay. Got um, so yeah, I do need to like I, I do have to put extra time into that more so than like tracking and stuff Yeah well, I feel like, especially for the game that you're playing now, I feel like Apex in general is kind of more about tracking. I mean, up to the wingman, right? De but yeah, definitely. Yep. In general, it seems like it's more tracking, so that's that's a good thing for you. Yep. <laughs> yep. And that's why I like I like the R301, and I like beaming people. I don't necessarily like using the wingman. <laughs> yeah, I I like I'm like one of those people where I'm like, man, I want to get good at the wingman just because like I feel like it's flashy, you know, and it's cool and it's fun. I I, I really like the wingman, but, but I'm not good at it. But uh, that's definitely my goal for sure. Totally. <laughs> yeah, me too. 
I feel like I should put it, it'd be good for highlights for sure. I, I definitely need to use it more. Yeah, I mean, but I mean, shit, honestly, man, you, your, your tracking is so damn good that even that would be perfectly fine for highlights. You don't, you don't need. Them. Okay, I'll just, I'll just, I'll just put, yeah, I could make like 10 minutes of just one clips, but I try to put like, I, I know a lot of people, they'll just like put a bunch of one clips in their montage. To me, what I want to see in a montage is like consistently great aim, not just like one kill that you're really good, but like yeah. three or four in a row where you're like consistently, um, you know, aiming well. That, that to me is like, that's what I like to see. Yeah, yeah, no, definitely. There, there was this uh, clip I watched the other day. It was, I think it was, yeah, it was Shroud. And it was just like one long clip. It was pretty much a team wipe by himself, but he was using the G. I think, he, I can't remember if he was using the G7. No, I, I think it was the longbow. It was, it was a sniper. Um, yeah, he was using the longbow, and like the hits were just super clean and consistent throughout the whole fight. And it was, it was a decent long fight, you know, a couple minutes at least. Like, yeah. It's just it, very impressive to watch. Yeah, I, I think that's you're right. Like, even just consistency throughout all types of game, whether it's flicking, tracking, it's just uh, it's really fun to watch when you can see it all in a single clip or throughout a montage, I should say. Yeah, totally. Um, what do you feel about what do you feel about uh the confidence? from aim training so you know how like when you'll hit a you'll hit a new high score right for a while you've been struggling you hit a new high score and you get this confidence how well do you feel like that confidence translates into the actual game just the confidence itself that's a, that's a good question um i think I think confidence comes from knowing where that boundary is of aggression, I guess, in a shooter. Yeah. So, so like in Apex right now, like the first week that I was playing, I was playing public match arenas and had to try really, really hard and still did like, I did good. Like I would have, you know, I'm good to where I can get like good highlights from aiming, but you don't see all the other rounds where I just make overt, big overt mistakes where I'm out in the middle of nowhere and just get killed over and over, or I'm completely whiff shots because, well, I'm just not used to the recoil of that gun or the way that that character moves. I think confidence comes from, uh, like knowing where that line of aggression is. So like now, I feel like I can just sprint at an enemy team, get into a 1v3, and then I know how to like isolate the 1v1. I don't know what I'm trying. Yeah, you, you, you want to isolate each 1v1 and you know all the tactics. I think confidence, honestly, confidence in, in your game comes from the time that you put in and and 100% the time that you put in. And you're just going to get, you just got to get exposed to thousands of gunfights to the point where you internally you just have this like mental model of, of how you should approach each gunfight and you so you have like a little mini plan for every little encounter and you've had it that same encounter like 100 times and so you know how it's most likely going to go um but then the, the really the big thing with aim training for me is like even though i had all this time spent in call of duty so i knew like how to position myself like how to use sight lines and cover and stuff like that but the mouse like i couldn't get my mouse to to put where I needed to go. <laughs> so yeah. now <laughs> there's definitely a, an extra layer of confidence that I know that w whatever my plan for the, the, the battle is going to be like, I can actually execute it 90% of the time as opposed to like, you know, 60%. So yeah, I think it, it definitely helps just being better. Um, but yeah, experience is the ultimate, um, confidence giver, I guess. Cool. 100% makes sense. Um, do you feel like you, do you prefer arenas for that reason in Apex or is it kind of like, like just because you get more into gunfights or you kind of, you like both arena and battle royale? Like what are your thoughts as far as the different modes in Apex? Um, yeah, I think arena is the quickest way to get better at um, gunfights um, and 1v1s, but it is, it is different than uh, battle royale. So whenever I switch over to battle royale, it's going to be a new game. I'm looking at it like a new game and I'm looking at it like I'm going to get owned for several weeks and that's okay until I learn. Um, but then again, there's just a lot of, I'm going to get way more reps in with arenas. So 
Um, they're different, but in general, I like playing like respawn game modes with a lot of action anyway. So I'm not a huge bit fan of like tactical FPS and stuff. So I mean, CS:GO and Valorant are gonna teach you how to use sight lines and corners um, pretty well, you know. Yeah. Like slicing the pie and things. Have, like have you ever? Uh, so Aimer Seven has a guide called the Heuristics of Geometric Positioning. Have you ever heard of it? I I you talked about it in your video, right? Yeah. It, <laughs> I was making fun of how complicated it is. So. At some point, I should make a video of basically boiling down what he says. But if you read that guide, that will kind of like tell you everything you need to know about how to use high ground in corners. Um, it's it's way over complicated. But if you do read that guide and actually try to understand it, it really like you don't necessarily need to go play 2,000 hours of CS:GO. You can understand the concepts and then bring that into your game. Yeah. Like so that game that you're actually trying to play. Yeah, it's just knowing how to use corners, how to use high ground, and how to position your character to like make the most of it, and then ingraining that into muscle memory, which if you understand the concept, you don't necessarily need to play CSGO. Yeah. So anyway. Well, I'm going I'm to need you to link that to me later. <laughs> I okay. think I, I'm pretty sure I actually saved it because you had it in your in your uh, description, didn't you? Uh, I'm probably not. <laughs> probably not. No? Not for that okay, one. Maybe I didn't save it then. If it was in there, then I did save it. But if yeah, it I'll, I'll, I'll send it to you here <laughs> through Discord. Yeah, sounds good. And I, I'm waiting on that video, too. That'd be a, that'd be a good video to watch. <laughs> for sure. <laughs> um, so... Are you? Would you consider yourself an introvert or an extrovert? Sorry, it's super random. It's out of nowhere. Uh, I'm definitely an introvert. Yeah. Show. I I love okay. being by myself, and I usually play games by myself too. So yeah. I'm right there with you, man. Are you? I, oh, 100. percent I just did a stream the other night. The the whole challenge of the stream was to play with random people because and have the voice chat on and actually try to talk to talk to people in the voice chat because usually I, especially when i'm just starting the game i just mute all of it because you know that's what i do too yeah 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 it's like eh, i don't want to deal with the the toxicity and everything so yep. but it, you know it turned out okay I actually made a couple friends um so that's good. what is your how do you feel about the whole i guess introversion and in gaming and the toxicity and the social anxiety what would you recommend to people that have those issues in games that require a team off um the first thing i would say is i think there's way too much focus on communication and um worrying about what your teammates are doing for the vast majority of people until you're a top one percent player you need to focus on your own game and you need to treat your teammates and the enemies like they're ai and you need to perfect what you're doing first. So in general, I think it's better to disable comms until you're a top 1% player. And then once you get up there, then that's another aspect of your game that you need to add in. Um, you can, honestly, you can turn the incoming voice chat volume to zero and you can still put out your comms. You may not hear their comms because in, if you wanna climb in a ranked game, you need your voice comms to be at least, you know, over 50%. Uh, positive and helpful right and in general for most competitive games over 50 percent of the time the comms are either not helpful too much or they're toxic that will cause you to tilt for several games afterwards so in general i don't think it's that big of a deal until you're on an esports team and you're trying to actually go pro where communication is very highly vital to where you have to really work as a team um i i don't think it's that important but that's just my the way that i look at games I think that's a super interesting perspective because I like you pointing that out to me and now that I'm thinking about it 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 makes a lot of sense but that's not it's not how people think about things and that's not what people teach on uh, on you know and YouTube videos and everything they're like communication is key da, 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 you know like you said it's just like uh, really jammed down people's throats as far as communication I, I've never thought about it in that perspective um, and I think that's interesting because it's like, if you take that time and you're focusing more on your gameplay and what you need to do to play around those situations, uh, that's gonna be much more important than, well, 
getting called a shitter right <laughs> yeah and I, and i i'm easily like uh i take credit because i take gaming seriously and so if somebody um criticizes my own game like i take it personally and so maybe that's something that i need to work on but i just know for me like it's gonna it's gonna set me off a path of playing poorly for the next several games and i'll probably subconsciously throw that game because i don't like my teammate and i want him to lose <laughs> <laughs> You know, but I mean, <laughs> yeah. like, it, yeah. you know, every game is made up of all these different little sub skills and communication is one of them. hundred percent is. Yeah. Um, but you can you can use pinging. There's in almost every game now, your pinging is probably better information than what you're talking. And a lot of times, like I get distracted by my teammates talking and they're and they're saying things and, and it's constantly and it's hard for me to focus on all the other aspects. So like yes you need to like be aware of of where your team is what they're doing right um yeah. but doesn't you don't need to be inundated with every thought that they have so i i don't i don't think it's as important as people make it out to seem yeah and honestly it seems like gaming has gone more in that direction anyway like with these really complex pinging systems like apex has um yep. compared to just you know oh uh, in even warzone even though it's just a one button ping you it's still uh what's the word i'm looking for contextual it's very contextual it works very fluidly to the point where you don't really need comms as much yeah um and even like like i used to play a, a lot of world of warcraft too much world of warcraft and in arenas it was like pretty much have comms or not but then recently when i started playing it again it was like oh nobody even does comms if, at all yeah, it's pretty intense. I know 3v3 comms are pretty important, but 2, 2v2, yeah. I think a lot of people don't ever even do it because you, yeah. you kind of understand like the scripts. Yeah, exactly. It's very, it's much more easier to read in 2v2. But even 3v3s, man, people are doing it up to Gladiator and shit. I'm like, wow, that's yeah. great. I said it works. <laughs> so you've pretty much done, um, gone up to Diamond in arenas without comms, essentially. Uh, yeah, yep, and even I have voice chat enabled for most of my games and nobody ever talks so and mostly Most every game and I'm pretty much solo queuing too and it's basically a duo and me and most of the time They're in their own discord call. So right I I so if I do get um, If somebody says something negative I immediately just uh, Turn the volume all the way to zero and then I still can calm things like hey pathfinders one shot But yeah, yeah. I can't hear them being toxic. So Yeah, yeah no, that's solid advice. Solid advice. I like that. Yep. Um, what do you? What are just some general tips for for a beginner? Do you have a, in regards to aim training? Kind of taking this. Aim out. training. Um, get a 144 hertz monitor and a computer that can do it. <laughs> um, <laughs> yes. it just it's huge. It's, yeah, it's massive. Uh, just get a normal gaming mouse that you like. Uh, Rocket Jump Ninja is the goat. If you want to look, that website's amazing. And then uh, Voltaic has a master mouse pad sheet. I like the Zoe GSR, so just get yourself like decent equipment to start. Uh, my table is a fold-out Walmart table, uh, plastic. I have a Amazon Basics fifty-dollar chair that with no armrests, um, and that's just it works. And then after that, it's just consistency over time, and that's that's it. Consistency over time and focusing while you play. And what would you say is some tips that you have uh, for those Voltaic benchmarkers that are above Diamond trying to push for Masters, Grandmasters? What kind of tips would you have for them? Um, I would say if you want to keep going at a good pace, you got to play probably two hours a day. Um, I don't think I don't think one hour is enough personally, unless you're also playing uh, other shooters outside that a lot. Um, I, I think you need to play two hours a day and then and honestly, you could probably get away with 90 minutes if you're focused. Um, I think you need to train all all aspects of your aim and then uh, spend extra time on a specific benchmark. Kind of like I recommended in my video, one hour, the fundamental, and then like 30 minutes on a specific benchmark. I think that's, that's kind of necessary. You're not going to really make progress if you just do one hour a day, I don't think. But maybe you can. It might just take two years for you to get to rank up. Yeah, it's a long time. <laughs> yep, it is. Long time, long time. Um, and for anyone in the description, I'll I'll have the links to all your routines in the description because I have them uh, notated because they're good routines. So I was like, holy shit! As soon I'm telling cool. you, as soon as I saw your routines, I was like, 
All right, it's time. This is what I needed. This was my uh, kickoff. <laughs> Heck yeah, I gotta recommend uh, the yin and yang routine by Chris G. I'll, uh, I'll send you a link to his stuff here too. That's another good one. Awesome, but. awesome. Um, one last question. Uh, well, actually, two two last questions. So, on the voltaic scale, what level of aim would you say is sufficient for high tier gameplay, such as Apex Predator? I mean, we kind of touched on this a little bit earlier, but what would you say um, would be sufficient enough to hit, hit Predator or whatever the Valor top is or anything like that? Um, well, I know uh, Predators that are like not even plat, so it's not necessary. Um, I think that everybody should just strive to get diamond complete. Um, that puts you in the top 1% of aimers and it's just a good, like, I think everybody could reach diamond complete. Getting to master, grandmaster, that takes a little bit more dedication. Like I said, you kind of need to play like two hours a day of aim training only, um, or already have thousands of hours of FPS experience. So I think everybody should just strive for diamond complete. Um, and you could, you could do that with an hour a day, every day for, you know, a year or something. I think most people could do that. Yeah, that's kind of what I was thinking. I was like, at first I was like, okay, uh, I have to hit Grandmasters. That's what I was thinking at first. And then I was like, you know what? Let me just get to Diamond and that yeah. will be, yeah. Let's I mean, simmer down I, I thought it was going to take me, I thought it was going to take me two years because what I had heard, like uh, Christmas is canceled. It took him like a year and a half or something. And so I was like, oh shit, it's probably going to take me that long. But I didn't, I didn't realize that. Um, I had, I guess, a propensity for it or something. I don't know. I think I've got, you know, good high hand coordination plus the, a lot of play time before that. So, yeah, you, I, I remember like kind of, kind of calculating to see how long it you had taken you, and I was like, okay, he started. I think he released that voltaic journey video like seven months ago or eight months ago, about right. Yep, January. I think yep. it was. Yeah. And I was like, whoa, that's insanely fast. Cause I heard what I was hearing is it takes like crazy long time to uh, get grandmasters. Like, yeah, I was expecting like two years or so. Um, yeah, I, cl so, yeah. I click a lot of the names on the leaderboard that I'm around on the, on the benchmarks. And a lot of people that are around me are around that 500 hour mark. Um, I don't think there's anybody like below that. And then there's a lot of people that are like thousand to 2000. So yeah. 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 I believe not easy mm -hmm. consistency is key people <laughs> for sure um, uh last question is uh what what is your future goals in regards to gaming content creation what what's uh what are you looking to do for as a this is career choice for you or um no i mean it's just a hobby for now i guess um basically for the last several years i've, I've wanted to be a top tier I mean, I've wanted to be a pro gamer since I was like 16. When Modern Warfare 2 came out, I wanted to be in phase and optic, and that dream has just kind of never left me. Um, this this year was the first time since then that I've actually stuck with the same game long enough to become like a top 100 player. So, um, my goal now is to be on the Voltaic main team, uh, and to do that, I got to get Masters and Apex, and then I'm gonna apply. And then after that, it's going to be basically what I would like to do. My, my, my real hobby is like getting better at skills. So I just like getting better at stuff. And so my future plans for my channel is to keep doing that with different games, maybe even branching outside of shooters. But I just want to basically get to the top 1% or higher in just several different games. Um, one of my favorite YouTube channels is Mike Boyd, where he does like he learns like really quirky skills in like a week or two weeks. But for me, I, I like the long term projects. Is that the, he's like a, I think he's like an Asian dude and he like did like this pen spinning and like Apex. Oh, that's, that's Ping, that that's Ping with Fi. He's also that's, a good, good YouTuber too. Yes. That yeah, type of stuff. Yes. That's what I like. What was the other channel called again? Uh, Mike Boyd. He, he, only, he does like one week challenges, you know? And for me, like, I just, I hate, I hate those. I did aim training for 30 days and became an aimbot. I hate those videos because it takes hundreds of hours to get, to actually become top tier. Like it takes a long time. So anyway. Yeah. I mean, if you think about it, 30 days, it's like, I guess that's like 60 hours if you're doing two hours a day, which is. Which ain't nothing. 500 hours. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yep, exactly. <laughs> yep. um, and if it, so if it does go in that direction, I mean, even in a, Let's say if you don't 
if you don't get on a pro team or but your content creation takes off is that something that you're you would be excited for and you would uh, want to pursue or yeah i mean even i mean i'm gonna be doing this stuff even if i wasn't making videos about it i would still i still try to get better at games just like with world of warcraft i, I tried to get high ranked in, are, in arenas but you know like i said i would stick to it for two months and get to like 1800 and then i'd stop so for me like i'm gonna be doing i'm gonna this is my hobby i like getting good at video games so i just i think it's a good youtube channel idea to like document your journey it's inspirational and I, that's the videos that i like to watch so yeah i'm gonna be doing this whether or not it it takes off or i make videos or not so yeah i'm, I'm gonna keep doing it for years and years probably yeah i, I love i love that I'm, I'm actually really excited to check out the Mike Boyd channel because I, I like that stuff too. I once I saw um Pingu Ping Pingui Pinguify yeah yeah Pinguify yeah once I saw his channel I was like oh this is a really cool idea of just getting better at stuff because it's fun to you know pursue goals random goals as small and quirky as they are you know just achieving those goals can uh, be very satisfying satisfying yep yep. Definitely. Um, anything else, man? Any any questions you have for me, or anything you want to shout out to, as far as where people can find you? Uh, sure. Yeah, just uh, check out my YouTube channel, Silky Chris. What's up? I make aim training videos, and just try to get better at shooters for now. Um, and then twitch.tv slash Silky Chris. I'm uh, documenting my journey to Arena Masters and Apex. And uh, just thanks for having me on, man. Yeah, definitely, man. Thank you for coming in. I'll have uh, the links in the description for anything that you need. Do you have Twitter? Anything else like that? No? Uh, yeah, I guess Twitter. I guess I do have a Twitter. I just made it. I'm, I think I'm supposed to have a Twitter for to be on Voltaic. I don't, I've posted, like, one thing. <laughs> uh, <laughs> gotcha. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah tw uh, I'm silky. I think I'm at Crispy Silk or something. <laughs> Crispy Silk. Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll have it in the description. For okay. <laughs> Um, cool, man. Sounds good. I, I appreciate you uh, spending the time with me. I know it's been been a long chat, but uh, I really appreciate you coming on, man.